The GMC Canyon has been around since the 2004 model year as a compact pickup offering to compete with the offerings such as the Dodge Dakota and Toyota Tacoma, to name a few. The first generation ran from 2004 to 2012 model years, with a significant update for the second generation in North America from 2015 to the 2022 model years. For nearly a decade, the trucks have been shared with a similar Chevrolet Colorado. For this year, the Canyon now features more standard equipment, more torque, and a much different look than its stablemate. In addition to that, it's also more expensive and, if you can believe it, it gets worse gas mileage with the 4-cylinder than the discontinued V6 variant. So what do you get? Well, better driving dynamics, a true off-road version, and better exterior and interior design elements and materials. What's the trade-off? A mid-size pickup with full-size prices, laggy infotainment screens and instrument cluster screens, and not-so-great fuel economy. Is it worth it? Well, that's up to you. Our 2023 Canyon Elevation Crew Cab is a pretty decent ve uh, vehicle for what would be called a base level entry, and with the off-road suspension height, beefy Goodyear Territory AT tires, and shocking solar flare paint, I happen to love it. Our truck was built at the Winsville Assembly Center in Winsville, Missouri in August of 2023. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to a new review series video from Neighborhood Car Reviews and I'm here at Hobson GM in Martinsville, Indiana and what we are doing is we are taking a look at this brand new stunning 2023 GMC Canyon. Now what we have today here is a GMC Canyon with the uh, Elevation Premium Package. Now this vehicle is four-wheel drive. It is painted in the absolutely stunning solar flare. It is a premium metallic paint, and it does feature the jet black leatherette interior. Its full pricing is shown on screen, and the options list is in the description box below, so make sure you head over there and check that out. Now today's video is gonna be a full in-depth review of this vehicle. We're gonna go over everything from the exterior to the interior, mechanical performance, off-road capabilities and everything else in between. For starters, while two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive variants are available, our Elevation is four-wheel drive with an electronic single-speed shift-on-the-fly transfer case with Baja, Terrain, and Overlanding modes and a two-inch factory lift. It features a ground clearance of 9.6 inches, an approach angle of 33.3 .3 degrees, a departure angle of 22.3 degrees, and the ramp breakover angle of 20.9 degrees. It features a 3.42 rear axle with electronic locking differential. Power comes in the form of GM's L3B 2.7 liter dual overhead cam 16 valve 4 cylinder engine with variable valve timing and variable valve lift. This engine is a gasoline direct injection and features a single board Warner dual volute turbocharger with an electronically actuated wastegate and 27 psi of boost and a 10.0 10 to 1 compression ratio. This engine creates 310 horsepower at 5600 rpm and 430 pound feet of torque at 3000 rpm. This truck can accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in around 6.5 seconds and it features a gross vehicle weight rating of 6,250 pounds. The curb weight is through 4,321 pounds and can haul a maximum payload of 1,929 pounds and tow a maximum trailer weight of 7,700 pounds. The Canyon is equipped with a 21.4 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 5.3 gallons for 100 miles driven and features a total driving range of 406 miles. EPA fuel economy figures are 17 miles per gallon in the city, 21 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 19 miles per gallon. The sole available transmission is an electronically controlled second generation GM 8-speed AL80 automatic with manual shift capability, low gear select, and a plethora of driver changeable drive modes. They also work in conjunction with the transfer case. Now I've always been a fan of these wacky yellow colors. 
all of my old iPod touches and all that kind of stuff were about the same color because I like the yellowish green looking colors and this vehicle really caught my eye and that's why I'm here reviewing it. All right, as we walk around the rear, we're gonna go over in depth, but as you can see here, just a real quick view. Just a standard short box, kind of a flare side looking bed. It's a crew cab. Alrighty, around the rear of the canyon, it's, well, I mean, it's just a pickup truck. There's nothing really um, very visually interesting to report back here. We're just gonna go over it real quick. One thing I do like, uh, it's a love it or hate it thing, but I do love the solar flare paint. But I also like the contrast between like the black trim and the paint itself. Like these uh, wheel lips here. You have your marker lights back here. They have the GMC logo. Of course, you also have this really nice uh, gloss black uh, 3D adhered uh, 4x4 identifier. Moving down the tail lights, they do have a really cool uh, light pipe type look. Uh, incandescent bulbs here for your brake lights and turn indicators. Of course, you have your reverse light here. You have a marker light down here. In the bumper, you do have these little bumper steps here. Uh, you also got the uh, ultrasonic parking sensors. You do have treads on the bumpers as well for added traction. Towing package with the four and seven pin wiring. Of course, you also have your receiver hitch here as well. Here in the tailgate, you have the large commanding GMC badge with the lower, uh, the uh, smaller Canyon badge here in uh, gloss black. And of course, you also have your elevation denomination there. All right. Walking along the profile of the canyon, as you can see, especially with the elevation trim, it does sit on a, a little bit height and right height. It is four wheel drive. You just have the options of uh, two wheel drive and four high. There's nothing else. But as you can see from the uh, on screen dimensions, uh, the truck sits pretty good. Steering on this truck is electrically assistive, vehicle speed sensitive, variable rate, rack and pinion with 37 degrees of steering angles, 3.6 turns lock to lock, and a 41.3 foot turning radius. Wheels on this canyon are the 18 by 8.5 inch dark gray painted aluminum wheels shot in 265, 65, or 18 Goodyear Wrangler Territory AT tires. Brakes are power assisted four wheel disc brakes with ABS, stability track, traction control, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian and bicyclist detection, forward collision alert. And up front, we have 13.4 inch ventilator rotors, and in the rear, 13.3 inch solid rotors. Alrighty, moving up front, we're gonna go over the front in detail as well. I really like the commanding view of this vehicle. It has a really good, positive look to it. Uh, very aggressive, as you can see. It's a very aggressive, uh, commanding presence. Alrighty, taking a look at the front of the GMC Canyon in detail now this is an elevation trim level it also has the uh, elevation premium package a little bit more off-road oriented than the standard canyons are taking a look here you have this gloss black uh, skull caps on the fold away mirrors pretty bulgy hood here it's a very lightweight aluminum hood coming down to the really cool uh, front lighting treatment here all gloss black bezels Clear lenses with tinting. You have the marker light here with the Canyon logo here. You have this light pipe. It illuminates white for running lights and of course amber for the turn indicators. But as you can see, it actually goes all the way down like one continuous strip where the body work kind of intersects. So these are all just your driving lights and turn indicators. This is your main headlight here. They're all LED headlamps. They do have the silver bezel insert with the GMC logo. And in set, you have the high-intensity LED fog lamps right here. Now, front and center is a gloss black commanding front grille. It does have a large GMC logo here in the center. And down below, you do have tow recovery hooks. Just a really cool front end of this truck. Looks really good in this uh, paint color, too. All right, before we get inside... This vehicle does have remote start as standard. Very easy to operate. Just double press the remote start button on the key fob. All right, before we get inside, let's take a quick look at the key fob. It's just a standard GMC smart key. Very compact, matte black plastic. 
Got some chrome there. Of course, you got the GMC logo. And on the front, you have your lock, unlock, panic alarm, and of course, that remote start button that we covered before. Now, as I stated before, this is a smart key access system. So by keeping the key fob in your purse or pocket, you can actually keylessly lock and unlock the vehicle doors. To do so is very simple. Just locate this chrome button here on the door handle. One press there, it'll actually lock the vehicle. To unlock it, simply press that button again. All right, and inside we have an all new interior, all new materials, new design. Taking a look at the door panel. On this trim level, it's not very adventurous. It's very much just black plastic and black vinyl. You do have some textures here. You have this grain texture here, but it is hard plastic. You have another little texture here that probably could stand to be silver to break it up a little bit. This part here is actually a padded vinyl, padded vinyl armrest. You do have contrast stitching, more of that textured finish there. Of course, we have a chrome door pull, door locks, power mirror controls, power window controls. You do have a small little storage cubby here, bottle holder there, door speakers are right here. Taking a quick look at the instrument panel, the only lighting control on the instrument panel is the instrument cluster brightness and dim. Um, Say for that, there's absolutely no lighting controls. Those are all in the touch screen. Uh, trailer brake control here, hood releases right here, two pedals indicate no manual transmission. We do have the premium all weather floor mats with the GMC logo there. They do have a protective cover on them. Steering wheel is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And this vehicle happens to be equipped with an eight way power driver's seat with two way adjustable lumbar support. All right, taking a look at the seats in this vehicle, they are not leather. They are actually a jet black uh, Cortex leatherette. It's just a heavy duty vinyl. But I will say that the seats, in the little bit of time I've been sitting in them, they are actually very comfortable and they are supportive. They do have some flex to them. They feel kind of like leather. Uh, high adjustable head restraints. These seats are also heated. Comes with a premium package. All right, now that we're inside, let's take a quick look around. There's a lot to show in here because it is a very nicely equipped vehicle. Leather wrap steering wheel here. It has a nice thick rim steering wheel with three spokes. You do have an open spoke in the bottom. And to break up some of the black in here, we do have the satin silver trim that frames the entire center of the steering wheel and the side spokes. Looks very nice. Of course, you do have the silver here with the GMC logo, mirrors that front grill look. Of course, over here, we do have cruise control. Cruise control off and on, set and uh, resume. Of course, your accelerate and decelerate by hitting the toggles. And of course, your collision avoidance. Over here on the right hand side, we have voice controls, music controls, phone controls. This is our display uh, screen control there. And this is your menu select and confirm. Uh, this vehicle does not have, it actually has the base level cluster. It does not have the premium cluster. So there's not a whole lot of reconfiguration going on, but we're going to go over that here in just a second. Multifunction control here. We have wiper washer controls, intermittent controls here. Of course you have your uh, high beam and of course your indication as well. Now, the instrument cluster, as stated before, it is not the premium um, LED uh, LCD configurable display. It is the base level. So the full premium one goes edge to edge. This one actually just occupies a space that starts here and ends about here. So just a little square here. And as stated before, this menu button here actually goes through the different menus and there's not a whole lot. This is what you start off with. You have a tachometer here, 7,000 RPM tach with a 5,500 RPM red line. You have your transmission temperature here, fuel level, coolant temperature and, uh, or, oh, I'm sorry, oil temperature and coolant temperature. This is your uh, distance to empty here with your fuel readout transfer case status, your Prindle, speedometer in the center and how many miles are on the vehicle, your odometer. To um, select your menus, just press that menu button and it goes into a trip information. There is absolutely no way to go to trip A or trip B because they're all right here, trip one, trip two. And of course your gauges are on the side and your speed is up top. Hit it again, goes to like audio content. And then um, here is kind of an off-road look. So you have pitch and roll here. 
you have steering angle here, transfer case status, and all that kind of stuff. And go back to a clean display and our full gauge display. Alrighty, let's take a pan over the top of the dash, as you can see here. More hard plastic. Does not have heads-up display. That little cutout is actually for your collision avoidance radar. And it shows, like, your distance. You do have some speakers up here. You do have your ambient light sensor there. And, of course, just across the dash. It just have a nice look. Over here, you do have a nice, soft, padded area here. Passenger side airbag is up on top. You have this really neat little um, gloss trim piece there gloss black in the air vent surrounded by this satin silver trim nice large glove box and moving over you do have a nice large uh, floating panel display um, the actual bezel here is actually bigger than the screen itself but the screen is pretty nice it does carry the uh, google assistant so all google software right now we're in google maps of course it also has google uh, android auto and of course apple carplay it also features the google assistant as stated before and the controls here are very simple. Um, this is your Google Assistant button here. Notifications are up here. Lighting controls are up top, as stated before, and we're in guest mode because we're still in guest mode. Anyway, hitting the vehicle button here, control or shows up all of your windows and door controls. So all the settings for that kind of stuff, drive and park, uh, traction control, all that. Lighting controls here, vehicle settings here, so you can set like your teen driver alert, rear seat reminder, all that kind of stuff. And then of course you have a window lockout, cameras, auto high beam select, front fog lights, and all that kind of stuff. This is your phone controls here. We don't have a Bluetooth connection on our phone. Well, we're not going to connect it to the vehicle, so there you go. Location, your maps, Google Maps, audio. AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio, and of course you have podcast accessibility and Bluetooth in your home screen. So it gives everything here. Uh, you do have some trailering um, information here. Google Assistant, your full climate controls are here. So panel distribution, temperature control for driver and front passenger. And you can also sync them. You can turn your AC on, recirculate, fan speed, all that kind of stuff. And then vehicle settings are here. Moving to the second page, Wi-Fi hotspot, vehicle information, camera controls, where we're just in. Off-road is kind of cool. So the off-road display here shows three different types. We have Baja, Terrain, and Overlanding. So in the Baja mode, we have our front or lateral and horizontal G-forces. You can also pull up your camera. Shows your drive mode, all that kind of stuff. Your lat and long compass and your elevation. It also shows your steering angle and, and it operates in real time. And of course your transfer case status. Going into terrain, shows a little bit different view. Very similar to what we see on the um, instrument cluster. And you can also uh, reset your values and stuff like that. Shows, just shows your pitch and roll and your tire pressure. Overlanding is more outdoorsy. So you have a detailed compass and you have your elevation. So right now, this side is in feet in the hundreds, and this is in the tens. So we're right about 490 feet, and so in 493 feet. As you can see, still shows the Latin longs. Anyway, so that's that. Okay, moving down, there's a lot, but it's, it's you know, oh, up here is your power switch and your volume control. Push button start, of course. And then you have climate controls here, digital readouts inside the knobs. And of course, if you want to change the passenger side, they can do so at their leisure. Up at top, we have three stage heated front seats, climate controls here, on off, passenger side heated seat, auto, max, uh, front and rear uh, defroster, fan speed controls, recirculate, AC and sync. Sync basically just says both driver and passenger are the same. Air vents down here, global window roll down, uh, does not go up, just all windows down, auto start stop, four-way flashers, lane, uh, lane keep assist, and auxiliary. USB type A and type C. I do not feel like this is a wireless charging mat. I feel like that comes on the higher trims. Satin silver here, nice little uh, shift lever here. Feels good in the hand, has a upshift, downshift, low gear select, drive mode select, transfer case. So you have two high, four high, and auto. 
electronic parking brake. All this is gloss piano black trim. So it is a fingerprint magnet, but here we are. Cup holders up front, small little storage slot, padded armrest here, opens up to reveal storage. And this little guy comes out to reveal even deeper storage. So overall, I think that you can spend quite a bit of time in the uh, canyon. It's very comfortable, very quiet. Overhead, we do have an automatic dimming rear view mirror, OnStar controls. We have our overhead lighting, dome override, turn it on and off. These right here are the microphones for the uh, Google Assistant and all that kind of stuff. Microphones are up in the headliner as well. Fold down center or sun visors feature vanity mirrors and illumination. The sun visors swing out and they do slide out and they do slide out quite a bit. So you have a good window coverage here. And of course you also have high adjustable seat belts. That's to be expected. All right, let's take a look at the rear seat now. Opening up the rear door, crew cab. So it's a nice wide opening door. And of course we have seating for three across. 60-40 split folding seats. We're gonna go over that here in just a second. Take a quick look at the door panels here. Um, if you thought they were boring up front, you're gonna be really pleased back here. More hard plastic, of course. Differing textures, very much similar to that of the front doors. This part here is still hard plastic where the front seat was vinyl. This here is still vinyl with the contrast stitching, so that's a nice carryover. Um, nice little door pull here, window switch, chrome door handle. Um, and your bottle holder and of course your speaker. So just a smaller version of the front door. I do like the cohesiveness that the door panels match. All right, let's talk about the seats. As stated before, the seats do seat three across. They are a 60-40 split folding seat with height adjustable head restraints on all the passenger seating areas. Of course, you also have a sliding rear window. That's really nice to have. No power window back here, but still, as you can see, it's also electrically heated. You have the uh, center point belt here. You also have a fold down center armrest here that does feature a nice little padding, cup holders back here. Overhead, we do have overhead assist handles, overhead lights. You have seat back mat pockets in the backs of both seats. The center console offers two additional cup holders for the rear seat passengers. We've also got positional air vents. This is a blank switch for what would be probably the heated seat controls for on a Denali. Type A and Type uh, C USB charge ports, however, that's really nice. And down here, uh, we have a household style AC outlet. I actually just discovered that. As you can see, all weather floor mats are back here as well. Okay, now the seats do fold up. However, you, they're, they're locked in place. Um, so you have to trip this little handle here. And then, once you lift this handle up here, which I'm going to do, and then, okay, then you can lift the seat, and it locks in place up here too. So you do have some small storage, but the majority of what you have back here is your jack and tools, um, things like that, and these are, um, not really sure what all that is, but anyways, your jack and tools, and of course your jack and instructions. To lower the seats, just lift that again. The seat on the passenger side does the exact same thing. Locks in place. Small more, uh, small amount of storage here. Not as much as the other side, but still under seat storage is better than none. And it falls in place.
All right, of course, it wouldn't be a truck without taking a look at the uh, bed, so let's do that. Now, there's only one way to open the tailgate, and that is the old-fashioned way. You have a real handle here, no membrane switch or anything like that, and it is locking. It does have the easy open and close tailgate, which is GMC speak for dampened. As you can see, it's just dampened, soft opening. But here you go. Uh, decent tailgate, tailgate to ground opening. It's about waist height. And on the tailgate, you do have uh, this ruler here. And you've got little cup holder reset, recess, recessions here. And you have these little curious things here. Well, what are these? Well, as you can see, there's a lock code there, or a lock symbol. So it's unlocked now. But what is unlocked? Well, this is. It's kind of clever. That opens up, and it reveals uh, sealed storage. So it does have a weather seal on it. And check that out. Kind of a hidden, uh, hidden storage compartment here. That's pretty cool. And this locks it back in place. All right, here is the bed. I will put the bed dimensions up on screen. But as you can see, it does have the spray and bed liner. It does say GMC on the back wall. You do have numerous tie down hooks. You've also got a uh, household style 120 volt, uh, I think it's a 400 watt household style AC outlet. And it does have uh, weather sealing on it as well. Just one of those. There's no lighting back here, but as you can see up in the uh, center high mount of stoplight, there are two cargo lights back there. So that does help with illumination, but there's no LED bed lighting. To close the tailgate is very easy. Just do it yourself. All right, and there you have it. That is the 2023 GMC Canyon Elevation. We hope you found the video informative, and if you did, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews, and of course, our Instagram channel at brentsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.